The very first ex-gay ministry was founded in 1973 by two men, John Evans and Kent Philpott. Mr. Evans was gay. He now says it doesn't work. Exodus was founded by two men, Michael Bussey and Gary Cooper. They went all around the country telling people how they had gone from gay to straight. And they were the perfect examples of a conversion. They were married, they had children. They were the poster children of the ex-gay ministries. But there was one problem. It wasn't true. On a flight to give a speech at a church in Indianapolis, Michael Bussey looked at Cooper and said, I love you. Unfortunately, they had to leave their wives and marry, married each other. The most famous touch therapist, Colin Cook, founded Homosexuals Anonymous, and he was kicked out of his ministry because he was having phone sex and giving nude massages to the very people he was trying to help. John Polk was the founder of Focus on Families, Love One Out program. I caught him in a gay bar and photographed him, hitting on my colleague. He was suspended as the president of Exodus International and also sort of downsized with Focus on the Family. These folks are using this to take advantage of people in their pastoral care. It's really a terrible breach in trust. And the very people that are trying to convince us that change is possible are the most damning evidence that change is not possible. Please welcome Ruth Peterson and Lance, who have both endured reparative therapy. Welcome to the show. Guys, you know what? And, uh, we're, because we're featuring our, our uh, documentaries today, we're going to come back and do this again and talk about this again at length okay. on the show because I think people need to understand. Talk for a second about uh, two different stories. You're 19? Correct. How old are you, sir? 41. 41. <laughs> Your parents said either you go get fixed, uh, eh, yeah. yeah, right? They sent you off to get fixed. You went your whole life thinking you needed to fix yourself, That's did right. you not? Yeah. And we're part of, watch this, because this is one of the things, I, 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 it's a Christian, a gay Christian, at a while, for a while. You were a gay Christian, correct? Yes, I, and I'm a gay Christian now. Gay Christian now. But different back then, you were a Christian that didn't believe that you could be gay. Oh, exactly. I believe that it was wrong for me to be gay and that I would do anything to make it right. Because I figured if that's what God wanted, then I need to give God everything, and it would do no matter what. So ultimately, I spent 17 years and over $30,000 on three continents trying to get help. I've been to exorcists here in New York to try to cast out the demons the of homosexuality. The demon homosexuality that's inside of you, cast it away. I was actually married for a time to a woman which was ended up in disaster and it was heartbreaking for her and you know, there's so many victims that get brought into this. And you were married to a woman, let's, let's get this part straight, you were married to a woman who understood that you had this battle and was trying to help you with that battle. Well our church, we were young and our church said God could do anything and if you've given your heart to Jesus and you've done your work, which we did, I did, and uh, they said well then why not? They gave us the blessing. And we were young, so we trusted our, our spiritual leaders. When that. did you finally realize that the reparative, or repaired, repairs needed to be made to somebody else? Yeah, that the society needs to be repaired. Yeah, I literally woke up one day after all of that exhausted saying, you know what? I'm lying to myself, and I'm lying to all my friends, and I'm lying to God. And even if it means I'm going to go to hell, I need to be honest about who I am. That's more important than anything else. Cool. And in your case, you told your mother and father, go ahead, send me all you want, but you're wasting your money. Exactly. They wasted a lot of money, too. They sent me to a gay boot camp um, when I was 16 years old, and, or 17 years old, and I was there for two months. Of Hold my, on a minute. You were supposed to go for two weeks. Supposed to go for two weeks, but when it wasn't working so well, they decided to wait, 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 wait. You were there for two weeks, and all of a sudden, somebody walked in and said, no, he's still too gay. <laughs> Basically, he crossed my legs wrong yeah, or something. Got, put that leg back down, right? So, yeah. So then they kept you for another two months. Another, another six weeks, and then somebody made a lot of money. Did you even try to go along it with it It was so all? ridiculous, you couldn't. I mean, you just, right. if anyone with the right, sense, right frame of mind could see how wrong it was, I mean. And so you, none of it has sunk in at all. So you left. Yeah. Watch this. You, <laughs> I'm sorry. you left as gay the sec that day as you did when you went in, right? Yeah, maybe even more. Who knows? More, okay. <laughs> so when you got home, what did they say? Uh, they took it into their own hands. They're like, well... Mom had the manuals. Mom <laughs> had the textbooks, and she took them home. And That's so right. she decided from this point she forward... Had all the, she had all the training she needed after that. So you, you at least got to the point, what, how old were you, 18, 17, 18? Uh, I was walk, same, 17. 17. You got to the point and said, enough. Enough. You were able to go and live where? 
I live with a wonderful family now um, who has a gay son. Uh, he went to my high school. I went to a Catholic high school, ironically. And my principal actually found this family for me to live with. And they're right. incredibly and nice. Now you're in college? I am. What do you say to those who would say right now they've got a 15, 16 year old son, daughter at home? If your kid comes out to you as you know, gay or lesbian or queer in general, they, you don't need to tell them there's something wrong with them. You know, this is formative years of their life. They don't need to internalize this hatred toward themselves. They just need your love and support in this because you're not going to be able to change them. Will you ever speak to your parents again? I don't know. Maybe this might turn them around. At least make them think. <laughs> Hope so. Good luck with this. Thank okay, you. I definitely. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the hottest hip hop documentary out there. And later on in the show, we're gonna meet one of the most powerful voices in hip hop of all time. We'll do that later. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this. These corporations found that it's a profitable thing to get involved into rap music and make it an album formatted music. And whenever you have corporations get into the business of defining anything, eventually they start defining a people.